If you've never picked up a paintbrush before, then this video is for you. I wanted to make a video about the absolute basics of painting. So um, what we're going to talk about in this video is what's the difference between chalk paint and ordinary paint? Uh, what prep work do you need to do? We're going to talk about brushes. We're going to talk about actually how to apply your paint. And then we're going to talk about sealing the paint afterwards. So a lot of people ask, what is the difference between chalk paint and ordinary paint? And there are a few differences. The, the biggest one is that chalk paint does not contain a sealer. So what that means is that when you're applying it, it doesn't start to seal itself. So it remains open and porous. And what that means is that it's easy for you to sort of play around with it, get different effects. So it's perfect if you want to do blending or distressing or anything like that. Because the paint remains open, you can continue to play around with it. It also sticks really, really well to pretty much any surface. So even shiny surfaces like glass and metal, yes, you can definitely paint it and it will stick. It requires very little prep work to make it actually um, adhere to furniture. You just need to do a couple of things. Make sure you wash your piece of furniture first because you want to get rid of any grease because that's something that could repel the paint. So just wash your furniture with some, um, I normally use a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water rinse that off and then you want to take a 180 grit sandpaper and just lightly scratch it across the surface to create a key. What that will do is just mean that your paint grips on better when you're applying it and you'll get better coverage straight away and it will be less work for you. One of the most beautiful things about the paint is that it has that beautiful soft chalky velvety uh, matte finish so it's a really unique finish and it's really beautiful especially for creating vintage or aged finishes we do put some clay into the paint and that's what makes it really really soft and so you'll notice when you're applying the paint that it's really smooth and creamy and it goes on really easily so that gives it really good coverage as well so like i said there's very little prep work needed you can get straight into the painting very quickly However, occasionally you might have a piece of furniture that might um, have tannin bleed through, and in that case, you would need to use a stain blocking primer first. If you're unsure about what you need to do for prep, there is a free prep guide download on the website. Now let's just talk about brushes. If you want a nice smooth paint finish, you really want to use a nice synthetic bristle on your brush. Um, that means that the paint will just flow off really easily from the bristles onto your piece. You also want a high bristle count. So what that means is that your brush will hold more paint when you dip it in the can, and it means less work for you because you'll get better coverage. We have three brushes. There's an oval brush, a flat brush, and the blending brush. So if you're just going to buy one brush, then I definitely recommend getting the all-rounder. That's why I called it the all-rounder because it basically does everything. So you can see it's got a slightly curved um, end to it. So it's great for getting into anything like um, turned legs or into any details that you might have on a piece. But you can also use it on a flat surface too. The flat brush is great for cutting in particularly and also for applying paint or varnish to a flat surface. And then our blending brush is great for blending, but also I like to use it for laying off um, any brush marks that you might have in your finish. So if you've applied your paint and you can see brush marks and you're not happy with them, you can take this brush, it's got tapered bristles, and you're just going to lightly run it across the top of your surface without applying any pressure and it will just take off the top of those brush marks so that you get a really smooth surface. So I particularly recommend doing that if you're painting something in white or a finish that's going to show up every little brush mark. So I'm going to paint this little side table here and I've washed it down with some vinegar and water and now I'm just going to give it a light scratch sand over with some sandpaper and I just want to show you what I mean because it really is a very quick job. We're talking just two minutes really on this piece of furniture. So you want to get uh, about a 180 grit sandpaper, 150 will be fine too, 240 probably be a little bit too fine. You just want to scratch up the surface a little bit just to get a little bit of um, grit for the paint. So you can see that it really is just a, a two minute job, just a quick scratch over the surface and that's it. 
it's often easier to do this once you've removed your handles, but in this case, I want to actually paint the handles the same color as the piece. So I've just left them where they are. When you've finished sanding, don't forget to take a damp cloth and just wipe off any dust that you've created so that it doesn't get caught up in your paint. So you'll notice that I haven't taken off the handles and that's because, yes, I am going to paint over them. The paint will stick very, very well to this metal. In fact, I have another one of these that I painted at least a year ago and I painted the handles and it's been in use ever since and it hasn't worn off at all. So now we're ready to start painting. I've decanted my paint into a separate container so that I don't contaminate the paint in my tin by dipping the brush in repeatedly. Now I'm just going to load my brush about a quarter to a third of the way up the brush. And now I'm painting a flat surface, so I'm just going to offload all that paint into the center of the area that I want to paint, and then I'm going to spread it all out. So I'm just offloading the paint here. And now I'm just going to pull it out to the edges of the piece. When I've covered the whole area, I'll just lay it all off in one direction. So if you imagine it's a bit like fabric that it has a bit of a nap, uh, you just want all your paint sort of facing in the same direction. And now again, dip my brush offload the paint into the centre and then pull it out to the sides of the piece. Now I'm just laying it all off in the same direction again. So that's the best way to get a nice smooth finish with the least amount of brush strokes. And when you're laying off the paint, try to use as little pressure as possible. It's really important not to overwork the paint. So if you imagine that as soon as the paint hits the air, it starts to dry. So every time you pull the brush backwards and forwards through it, you're more likely to create brush marks. So the least amount of uh, playing around with the paint that you do, the better. You just want to get the paint down and then let it do its thing. It will self level and it'll just dry and leave a nice smooth surface if you just leave it alone. When you're painting into these sort of details, you want to obviously have less paint on your brush. So you're just going to put a little bit of paint on the tip of your bristles and then lightly stipple it into all those little details. So on the sides of the piece, I'm just going to offload the brush a bit into the center just checking I've got right underneath that um, ledge there. And then I'm doing the same thing as I did on the top, just offloading the brush into the center and then dragging the paint out to the sides and then pulling it all off in one direction. For the legs, again, you want to have just a small amount of paint on your brush and then just stipple it into any details. And then rather than painting up and down on the legs, it's much easier to go across with a sort of flicking action and you'll get better coverage of the curved legs that way. If you're able to turn your piece upside down, it's often easier to actually start like that and paint your legs first and then turn it over. And that means that you don't miss those insides of the legs, which are always so difficult to get to and, and very easily missed. So especially if it's a chair or something that's easy to just pick up and turn over, it's a good idea to turn it upside down, paint it upside down first and then turn it up the right way and finish off all the rest of it.
Usually you'll want to remove the drawers to paint them, that'll make your life easier, but for some reason on this piece these drawers just would not come out. So I'm painting around the edges uh, of the frame and then I'm going to pull each drawer out as far as it will go and paint it that way. So on the drawers it's the same technique as with the other flat surfaces, just offloading the brush and then dragging the paint out to the edges. It's a bit different here because of the handle so I'm having to stipple around that and work my way around it and then I'll just smooth the paint out afterwards. For the edges, you can obviously tape them off if you want to. I find if I just put a small amount of paint on the bristles of my brush and then paint it off at about a 45 degree angle, you don't get the drips and um, you can actually get a nice straight line down the edge of your the sides of your drawers. Do bear in mind how tightly your drawers fit because if they are very, very tight then um, and you paint the sides, then you're just gonna end up scraping the paint back off when you put the drawers in. So only paint the sides if you've sort of got the space there to do it. Once your paint has dried, you're gonna do it all again and uh, just do a second coat in exactly the same way as you did the first one, and then you will get full coverage. If you're painting in white or in a really strong color like Rubber Duck or Ladybird, then do expect to do three coats. And particularly with any of the whites, if you're painting over very dark colours, you might even need four coats. I actually always tend to uh, paint a coat of grey first underneath your white because it will give you better coverage. So if you have any of our greys, then you can do that to get good coverage of your whites. You can also have a look at the painting whites um, tips on the website. So once the two coats have dried, you should have full coverage with most colours and you'll have a beautiful velvety soft kind of finish. If you've got any brush marks that you can see and you're not happy with them, you can just get a 180 grit sandpaper and just really lightly just sand over the top and that'll just take the tops off of any brush marks that you might have. Sometimes you notice them more on the horizontal surfaces, so you might want to just do that on the top. Now. You can just leave it right there if you want to and go on with the waxing. But I'm actually matching this to another bedside table that I painted. So I'm just going to do another technique. I'm just going to show you some dry brushing on here. There's another video on the website too about dry brushing. It's a really great, easy technique that just highlights details. So I'm just going to show you how to dry brush on here with a little bit of the colour Mallow, which is white, and that's just going to lift all these um, the handles and the raised details. So I'm using this really raggy old brush. Um, this is my favourite dry brushing brush. It's a terrible brush. I'd never paint a piece of furniture with it, but it's great for dry brushing. So you want something like this that's got nice stiff bristles. So a really raggy old brush like this works perfectly. And you can see I've just taken the tiniest amount of paint on the tips of the bristles. And I'm actually going to tap some of that off onto a bit of paper towel. So it's almost like you've got no paint on your brush and we're just going to gradually build up the paint finish by just tickling across the top of the details. Now, a really important thing to say about this too is that you need your brush to be completely dry. So if you've washed it up the day before and there's any moisture in it, this won't really work. You need the bristles to be thoroughly dried before you do this. And now we're just going to really gently sort of tickle it over the edges of the drawers and across the details and it's just going to highlight and pick up on those areas.
Less is definitely more with this technique. So just make sure you've really got barely any paint on your brush and just start off really lightly. It'll almost seem like you're not doing anything at all, but you can actually um, gradually build it up. And it's much better to do it that way than to put on too much and then have to take it off with a damp cloth, which then sort of destroys the whole dry brushing effect. So this is just one of many, many ways that you can play around with the paint to create different effects and add depth and detail to your painted pieces. But I really love doing this one. I think it's uh, so simple and it uses very little paint. It dries very quickly and it's just a really easy way to add a little bit more dimension. There's just something very satisfying about seeing all those details come to life as you take the brush across them. So you can see how with very little paint, the dry brushing just highlights all those details and gives another dimension to the finish. So let's just talk about the wax. Like I said earlier, the paint is porous, so it does need to be sealed with something after it has dried. If you don't seal it, it'll be, it won't come off, it'll still stick really, really well, but because it's porous, it will absorb stains, so it'll very easily get dirty. So you do want to seal it, ideally, after you finish painting. You can seal it with the clear wax, which is a blend of carnauba wax and beeswax. The carnauba wax is really super, super tough, and the beeswax keeps it a little bit supple. It's also got a little bit of bergamot oil in it, so it smells really amazing too when you're waxing your furniture. And it's really soft, so it's very, very easy to apply. So the wax is very durable and it is suitable for pretty much all furniture. The only time I tell people um, to use a varnish or top coat instead of the wax is if you're doing the top of a dining table or a coffee table, something that's gonna get a lot of um, wear and tear and hot drinks put down on it and that sort of thing, you might want to use a varnish instead. But for most purposes, the wax is absolutely fine. It's very durable. It takes about 14 days to be completely cured, but after about 24 hours it's usable. You just need to be a little bit gentle with it. So you can apply the clear wax with a brush or a cloth, whatever you prefer. I tend to just use a cloth. I find it really easy just to wipe it on. So you want to have two cloths ideally, one to rub it in and then just a clean one to take off the excess. So I'll just show you how to apply that. The wax is very soft and easy to apply, so you just want to take a little bit on a soft cloth. I normally use an old bit of t-shirt material. You just want something that's lint-free, basically, and nice and soft. And then you're just going to rub it over the surface of the paint, lightly. You're just closing the pores of the paint, so you don't need a huge, great, big, thick layer. You just need a nice, thin layer to close the pores of the paint, and just one coat is normally enough. I normally apply it in circular motions to work it into the pores of the paint and then I'll get a clean cloth and just wipe it off all in one direction again. If you have a look at your piece a few hours after waxing and you can see a few dry patches where you've missed, just leave it for 24 hours and then you can go on with a second coat. Normally it's quite easy to see when you're actually applying the wax uh, where you've missed anywhere because as you can see in the video it uh, deepens the colour of the paint down so it's quite obvious where you have and haven't applied the wax. When you're waxing the edges of drawers just make sure you leave them open for 24 hours so that they can dry properly. If you push them straight back in then they can stick a bit. The wax really deepens and brings out the colour of the paint and it also gives it a really beautiful, soft, velvety kind of finish. So I absolutely love applying wax. I love the unique finish that it gives and I find it really rewarding applying it because it is so smooth and easy to put on. So this piece is now finished. It's ready to be used. It just needs to dry for about 24 hours and then we'll be able to start using it. So in this video, I've just given you the basics. I've given you a taster of how easy it is to upcycle furniture using my chalk paint. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, of course, pop them through to me. You can email me at jane at plainjanepaints.com or just fill in the contact form on the website. 
We do have a beginner's paint pack available. So if you're keen to start your very first project in the paint pack, you will get a, a, a tin of paint, a brush and a clear wax. So you can get on with creating something beautiful for yourself. And if you are keen to learn more about all the different techniques that you can do with chalk paint, because there are a lot, then you should check out some of the uh, free tutorials and my online courses also available on the website.